cave system located about 100 feet underground. Paleontologists claim to have found the oldest known burial site in the world. Their findings will be featured in Unknown Cave of Bones, premiering in July on Netflix. Let's take a look. In 2017, my team was conducting excavation at the base of the chute. I'm sitting in the command center, and the you know, scientists down there, the explorers, waved to the camera to get my attention. And then I look down there and I see his little fingers coming out. National Geographic explorer in residence and world-renowned paleoanthropologist Lee Berger joins us now in studio to discuss this discovery and his continued dedication to improving our knowledge of human origins and evolution. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Yes, yeah, a pleasure to do so. Okay, so tell us about the lengths that you and your crew who are undertaking this excavation had to go through. I, I understand that it involved even losing weight. It, it did for me. The, uh, the people I select tend to be quite thin and quite small people. This is an extraordinarily dangerous environment. Mm. You're 120 meters, so like 400 feet back in the cave. You have to go down 100 feet through what we call a chute labyrinth, which is areas with squeezes down to seven and a half inches, lateral movements, you're always moving in a different direction. One of the most dangerous entries to an archeological excavation in the world. Only 46 people had ever been in there. Um, we were about to publish these burials, these graves that we discovered of a non-human species, no questions. And so I decided to lose 55 pounds um, over a period of, of about five months and make the attempt to get in to try and answer some of these questions. And in the process, not only answered the questions I was after, but also made discoveries like meaning-making symbols carved onto the wall above the graves of these non-humans. It was extraordinary most fantastic thing I've ever done in my life and the worst thing I've ever done in my life all at once. Why almost worst? Died. Well, I almost died. Um, on the way down, I had to make some decisions to pass through spaces I was not sure I could get out of. No one can help you in this space. Obviously, I didn't die. And, and it was all worth it. And it was absolutely worth it. And, and of course, we now have announced that, that this non-human species with a brain slightly larger than the chimpanzee a quarter of a million years ago buried its dead in a way until this moment we thought only large brain humans and our relatives like neanderthals did and so this really changes for those who do believe in evolution changes really the thinking on that it is it's it's dramatic because it also you know we humans often try to figure out reasons why we're exceptional why we're different why and we and part of that's our big brain we're smart and we do things like bury the dead. We make art and symbols and meaning-making objects. Those were the things that separate us comfortably from other animals. That just ended. We just found a non-human species that did those not only as well as we do, but before us. And these symbols date back potentially 241 to, to 335,000 years That's ago. That's right. For somebody who's not an, an expert in anthropology, just give us the, the, the magnitude of that. So let me, let me put that in perspective. The oldest art, uh, the oldest sort of meaning-making symbols that we have ever seen come from a coastal cave in South Africa by Homo sapiens and 78,000 years old. Mm. 78,000, that's a long time ago. That's the first time we thought that humans were becoming humans. If these symbols as we hypothesize, are made by this non-human species. They're not only using their brain better than we were at the same time, but they are carrying with them the sort of cognition of creating meaning. They're thinking about death. They're thinking about the future. They're creating something. Think about that. Now, you are the National Geographic Explorer in Residence. That's right. That sounds very official. <laughs> what does that mean? It's an oxymoron, right? Because if they're seeing me, I'm not doing my job. <laughs> I spend all my time in Africa. I come back here. What it means is that National Geographic Society, you know, it was the founder of modern human origin studies. And part of my new role in this great new age of exploration and discovery, which I really do think we are living in the greatest age of exploration in this field, is to bring back that central focus, bring it back into society and let the society 
do good and change the entire field and world because it's our story. This is the story of us. You, your excitement is contagious. <laughs> I, I feel excited about this time. Thank you so much, Lee, for joining. We knew something weird was going on from the first week. If you find one bone fragment or one tooth, that's a huge thing, right? Now we have this discovery of at least 15 individuals. 1,500 individual bone fragments. They're everywhere. It's amazing. A new shock to the scientific world, and really to all of us. It is about the mysterious extinct human species, Homo naledi. The new discovery suggests that this species may have intentionally buried its dead and carve symbols above the graves on cave walls long before the earliest evidence of burials by modern humans. Working in incredibly tight spaces in the Rising Star Cave System in South Africa, a team of researchers last year made these and many other discoveries about this ancient species. And our next guest was part of that expedition. Here he is describing one of the engravings just moments after he discovered it. I can't believe what we're seeing, and we're seeing scratch marks, uh, uh, sort of what you call petroglyphs, which are in pictures or, or carvings carved in the rock. But look at the scale of these things. Well, I'm so happy that we're joined now by the man you just saw in the tight cave, National Geographic is exploring residents and world renowned. Okay, how do I say this? Paleoanthropologist? Paleoanthropologist. Okay, paleoanthropologist. <laughs> Dr. Lee Berger joins us now. He's the author of this book, by the way, that comes out in August, August. Cave of Bones. It goes, I get PTSD looking at that image. You know, I almost died. That is out that very cave. claustrophobic to begin with. It, how did you almost die? It was, out? well, the, you, to get in that, you have to go down about a 40 foot shaft that is. Uh, gets down to seven and a half inches. No. It probably averages about nine inches Absolutely the entire not. time. Guess how much weight he lost to do it? 55 pounds. Yep. Yeah. Because you wanted to see this so much. I had to test some questions. We had discovered these burials, or we realized we had burials in 2018. We were on this National Geographic expedition. We were down there. I, we, I saw the burials, but I've only ever seen this thing through video. And we had these questions over COVID, and we could not get, get them answered. Only 47 humans had ever been in there. And so I decided I needed to get in there and test them. And, and when I got in there, I started making these discoveries. You know, our, our missions were always very focused. Saw those symbols, blew my mind. What, do, you, do you know what they mean? Uh, and this is no, a dumb question, and, but and like, that's what, an what, how, how is, can you conclude what you think they are? This is not a human species. They have a brain a third the size of ours. It's, it's uh, about the size of a chimpanzee's. And they're carving symbols 150,000 years before humans even think of doing that. They, they look familiar to us, crosses, boxes, yep. triangles, hashtags, <laughs> they don't mean Twitter, <laughs> I know that. And, and, and yet, we may never know what they mean. They, they were made for other Noletti, not for us. Right. But one thing we do know that I, that I really took away from what I read about the work that you've done on this, is that what you discovered erases the belief in human exceptionalism because of the size of our brains. You know, we have told this story since well, for thousands of years. Why are we different? We want to make ourselves different. One of the last things we had is this big brain. That just died, just like the home and away died, but with this evidence, that died. Why? We are not exceptional. Can you explain that one? Yeah, so, so humans have got this narrative that our big brain supercharged us, made us different. Let's do culture, let's do symbols, music, art, all the things that we like to separate ourselves from the animal kingdom. Of course, animal studies have shown us, you know, that's not true. Whales do incredible things. Corvids, you know, crows are brilliant. But now we know that neither were we exceptional in that brain. The brain doesn't make us whatever it is we are, we now see Homo naledi doing the things that we held as the only thing we had left 250,000 years ago. Your energy and level of energy and passion tells me that you're not by any means done. What's next? Uh -huh. In terms well, of your research, you know, how, there is, how do you there move is, this forward? Firstly, we're, we're bringing this to the world. We're going to engage the entire scientific community in how to test these hypotheses. This is science. It's ongoing. There's a lot more to discover. We're also going to be asking the world, 
What do we do with this? What do we do with discovering the first non-human species that had our capabilities? This is a special place to them. They took the dead of their kin mm -hmm. into these remote areas and buried them. What should we do? Do we just destroy it in the way we humans tend to? Or do we, you know, take care here? I think it's a special, it's almost our first contact moment, you know, the, the real first yeah. contact. Yeah. Paleoanthropologist, Paleo Dr. Lee Berger. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Really, you. really fascinating. And congrats on the book. Oh, thank you. Yo, yo, yo. How's it going, everyone? Michael here. Not going to spend too much time on this one. The Homo Naledi. Claims that Homo naledi bury their dead could alter our understanding of human evolution. A new series of papers claim that the ancient human species, Homo naledi, buried their dead and made engravings deep within a cave system in southern Africa some 300,000 years ago. If these claims are true, then it would overturn what was thought to be known about the development of human beliefs, culture, and symbolism but there are still some unresolved doubts about the evidence as it stands. In 2013, cavers exploring a remote... Yeah, so what this is really challenging regarding human evolution is the fact that like, I think we've only had evidence of like Neanderthals having, you know, under like having a more understanding of 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 like like closer closer to how homo sapiens are but when it comes to homo naledi not only did it seem like they had the same traditions as we did they have a smaller brain so it makes us so now we have to question really what makes one like like when does it like because apparently brain size is not what makes it aware what makes something aware since this species right here had the presence of mind to have burial grounds, feel sorrow, things like that. Littering the floor were some 1,500 fossil bones from what appeared to be a species of human. When they were excavated and studied, the results were even more specul- The results were even more spectacular than they first thought. Jesus. It belonged to roughly 15 individuals of an entirely new species of a 300,000 year old human, which was named Homo naledi. They said that they had a curious mix of features. They had feet, hands, wrists, and appeared more similar to modern humans and Neanderthals, but an upper body and brain size more like that of the archaic pre-human. I don't know, I'm not saying that. Osteopathocene, the Osteopathocene series. The combination of human and pre-human features sparked a debate about where they should fit on the evolutionary tree. You see, like, are they more like our own species or our ape-like ancestors? This is a, this is like another branch, you know, like another branch of, but apparently they were farther ahead in the process than we were. At, if, if you were to compare the same time, time frame. The researchers who first described the discovery argue that as the remains were found so deep within the cave that they must have been intentionally put there by other members of the species. Agreed. This, ra this raises a lot of intriguing questions about how the species behaved and whether it had human-like culture. Definitely did. See what I mean, guys? This is this is this is a never-ending story, man. Like this is this is what I was saying earlier about there's no way that humans, let alone this species or any other species of, you know, I don't want to call them big brain, but that's pretty much what I'm saying. This that like we're getting more and more evidence of other other lines of species having the same culture and traits and behavior that we do, we're becoming less, less special. 
which on which makes more sense it's honestly less it honestly makes more sense that we're less special than the other animals on this planet we just survived mm. okay there are two things at play one is the burial and one is the funerary behavior if you can have a funerary behavior without a burial if this is confirmed as a burial then at 300,000 years old it will be known as the oldest human burial ground ever discovered it would also mean that ancient hominins were far more organized and potentially had culture passed down from generations to generations. Man, I'm trying to say, there's no way just, just in the past 12,000 years we just decided to do some shit. We decided to learn how to grow crops and we've been here for 300,000 years? No way. They had art? The engravings form almost hashtag-like symbols, not unlike some of the early art found in another part of South Africa. This has led to the speculation that perhaps these engravings are in fact a subsequent addition to the cave by a later hominin, such as our own species. Yeah. Intriguingly, there was also apparent evidence of fire in the cave system, which would presumably have been necessary if any hominid was exploring so deep within the caverns but the question of who made the fire is much harder to answer right that could be any time could it have been later humans who explored the caves and let their marks on the walls or was it all exclusively made by the much earlier homo naledi yeah that's an impossible question man so Brains are very energetically expensive. Our brains use at least 20% of our body energy, and that puts huge demands on our bodies, physiology, and our behavior to get all that nutrition to fuel it. The assumption has been that, roughly speaking, the increase in brain size tracks the increase in behavioral complexity, particularly with Neanderthals and us. So if Homo naledi could do all this with the brain half the size, why don't we? What is all our extra brain power doing if Homo naledi is able to do this with an eight sized brain? These are very challenging moments and I don't think anyone has an answer to them at the moment. Oh, there's definitely conspiracies about it though. Junk DNA. Somebody took away our, like we lost our ability to, to, to be in touch with nature, I guess. Stuff like that. I've heard a bunch of stories like that, but. I guess this is, this, this is what I would consider a, the missing link, huh? This would be the missing link. Or a missing link, because I could have sworn we found the missing link already, but... That's what's up, man. So, I'll keep you guys updated on any new... Discoveries like this. This is amazing. Alright, guys. I appreciate it. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and... Be safe, everyone.